Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. If like me you're an electronics enthusiast and you enjoy designing portable electronics, you may find that after a while you come up with a collection of old or potentially damaged lithium polymer or lithium ion cells. If this is the case, then proper disposal of these cells is a paramount, of paramount importance to the safety of your laboratory. A typical lithium ion or lithium polymer cell is made up of a few main constituents, primarily copper foil, carbon, plastic and polymer separators, and an organic electrolyte inside which serves to carry the lithium ions themselves through the reaction process. Contrary to the name, there is very little lithium in a lithium ion pack. A very small percentage of the weight is actually, cons actually consists of lithium ions. So with this in mind, it's actually not a particularly harmful type of battery chemistry to dispose of in a landfill or mainstream waste, uh, waste stream. That being said, however, most of these constituents of this battery are recyclable, and as such, the best possible way to dispose of these is to take them to a recycling center that accepts lithium polymer or lithium ion batteries. If you don't have access to a recycling facility for lithium batteries, then you may have to dispose of these batteries in the landfill waste stream. If you have to do this, then it's extremely important that you discharge these cells and these batteries all the way down to zero volts and you maintain that zero volt uh, voltage level for a very long time before disposing of them. The reason for this is that the organic electrolyte and the plastic polymer material within these batteries is extremely flammable. If the batteries are crushed or damaged in the disposal process, whether it be in a garbage truck, a trash compactor, or the landfill itself, then an electrical spark within can ignite those flammable materials. This is why it's so important to make sure there's no stored electrical energy in the battery. Now one important distinction you have to make is that the 0% that you might see on a battery charge indicator does not mean that the battery has 0 volts yet or left. Lithium batteries have a, a minimum charge voltage of around 2.5 volts for safe recharging and discharging operation. Below this, they're no longer safe to recharge. This means that the battery gauge that says 0% actually means the battery is still between 2.5 and 3 volts uh, of voltage at the terminals per cell. That means that there's still plenty of electrical potential in the battery to create a spark and thus a fire if the battery is punctured or damaged. You may also want to fully discharge batteries even if you are going to take them to the battery recycling center, particularly if they are damaged. For example, this battery was given to me by a friend to dispose of properly, and it's actually been punctured. You can tell that a lithium polymer or lithium ion battery has been punctured if you can smell a bubblegum or banana-like vapor coming from any part of the cell. If that is the case, then the battery needs to be treated as extremely dangerous, not only because the, this, this gas is quite flammable, but also because it means oxygen is entering the battery, which can also make it unstable. In order to discharge your batteries, it's a good idea to use a resistive element such as a power resistor, a large speaker which can withstand a large uh, thermal load, or a low voltage light bulb in order to drop out the voltage across the battery. You don't necessarily want to use active loads like constant current uh, discharge devices because if they, have, if they rely on a forward voltage across a transistor, you may only get the battery discharged to say 0.6 volts, which still could potentially be enough voltage to cause a fire. What you do in order to discharge the battery in this case is you'll connect the desired resistor value across the output terminals of the battery, and you'll allow that to gradually discharge the cell or pack until the voltage reads out zero volts with a multimeter. Now one of the very important things to note is this only works well on batteries that are unprotected, such as this one, where the wires go directly into the cell and there's no protection circuitry on the pack. If your battery has protective circuitry, then it will turn off the discharging at 2.5 volts, just like the 0% state of charge meter would indicate, and then it will not allow you to fully discharge the battery. If you have a protected cell, you'll have to remove the protection circuit from that cell or pack and then connect the load to that battery. Now once the cell has discharged to the point where it says zero volts or 
let's say less than 0.1 volts on your multimeter because it may take an extremely long time for it to get all the way to true zero. What you can then do is disconnect your load and then connect the actual uh, output wires of the battery together. Now before you do this, you have to make sure that there's no sparking and make sure that when you do connect them, the battery doesn't get warm or hot. If you see any sort of a spark when you connect these together, then it means the battery is not sufficiently discharged yet and you need to put it back on the power resistors or the resistive load until it's really truly all the way down to zero. Now once you have it at that zero state and you've soldered the wires together or attached the wires together, you want to leave this battery in a fireproof container such as a metal bucket or a lipo bag and leave it for about 24 hours. The battery may become slightly warm as any final soaked charge is discharged through it, but it should not become hot in the process. If it does, like I said, disconnect the wires and connect it back up to the power resistor for further discharging. Once the battery is totally discharged, as in the case of this one, after 24 to 48 hours, it's then theoretically safe to dispose of in a landfill or take to the recycling center as hazardous waste for them to further recycle. So now I've given you an example of the safe way to dispose of a, uh, a damaged or puffed lithium polymer cell. Now as you can see in the background, I have a power supply connected to this 3S, this damaged puffed 3S lithium pack, charging it to 12.6 volts. That is the, uh, the maximum charge voltage for a 3S pack. Now. This battery is not inherently dangerous yet because it's, uh, it's simply partially puffed, it's not punctured, and it hasn't been severely overloaded or damaged. However, its capacity has become so low that it's in need of disposal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside and show you what happens if you don't discharge the battery before throwing it away into a landfill or commercial waste stream. All right, so I've got the battery set up outside in a fireproof location. Now before I do this experiment, I'd like to preface it by saying that this is not an experiment you necessarily want to try at home. I'm using all the correct protective equipment and I have a face shield and goggles and everything. But another hazard that you have to be aware of is since the polymer in this battery contains fluorine, the, one of the products of combustion of this is hydrogen fluoride, which can be quite a noxious gas, among other organic solvent gases. So it's a good idea to be uh, cognizant of that, and if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you probably don't want to try this experiment at home. But without further ado, I'm going to put on my face shield, and I'm going to line up a nail on this thing. Let me get so you can see. And we're going to let it have it. See what happens. Oh, it's going. It's going for it. Look at that. It didn't catch fire, but it sure let out a lot of smoke. But I don't think it's done just yet. Might have a little more to it. Oh, oh, it's still going. Now it's on fire. You see this, the, uh, the fire there? Energetic sucker, isn't it? And that is pretty much why you don't want to put one of these in a landfill if you haven't discharged it. There's a lot of energy in there, and there's a lot of flammable materials in it that can uh, get let off into the environment, or could uh, potentially create a large dumpster fire, or even worse, uh, a fire inside a building or a landfill where it could spread and cause even more trouble. So that's exactly why it's a very good idea to fully discharge these cells before you're done using or before you take them to the dump. So now that you've seen what a fully 
uh, fully charged battery does when it's punctured and how catastrophically it fails. Let me show you this one that I discharged already. It's already shorted out as you can see. So I'm going to do the same test. I'm going to put this on the block and I'm going to drive the nail through and let's see if we can observe any differences. So let's have a go at this. Not too much going on there. Maybe it's a dud, let's try it again. As you can see, no action, no smoke. Let's see if there's any heat. No heat coming off this either. The cell that's been fully discharged is completely inert, whereas the cell that was fully charged made an enormous vapor, uh, vapor release. So as you can see, the discharge cell would be safe in a landfill. The non-discharge cell would not be safe in a landfill. So hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully this was an informative opportunity for you to learn the hazards of lithium polymer batteries, as well as the proper way to dispose of them so that they don't create a fire hazard in the landfill or in the waste stream. Thank you for watching this channel, Dielectric Videos, and I will see you next time.